It's an honor to be here at Spelman with all you beautiful ladies, beautiful black women. <laughs> Shout outs to you all. I'm gonna wait for y'all to get slide over, girl. Let her in. Slide over. Let her in, let her in. Get your seat, girl, get your seat. Where your seat at? Oh God, because I don't want nobody to miss anything I got to say. I got a lot to say. Are you looking for a seat? What you, you giving out tickets? You got me one? What's this for? What? This for what? This for my, the color purple? Oh, I don't need nothing then, girl. Give them out. Give them out. It's an honor to be here on today. We are here doing the color purple. Miss Seely, my journey with this young lady has been amazing. She's also a young lady who um, went through a lot of things at a young age. But in the end, she overcomes. I like your shirt, the color purple. You, you came? You came Tuesday, you liked it, you enjoyed it? Did you feel good when you walked out the building? Good. I always tell people that the color purple isn't something, and I'm honest, how many of y'all know I'm an open book, I'm always honest, honesty is always the best. I don't think it's something that I wanted to do, but it's something that I had to do. Because we touch a lot of people every night, especially women. A lot of women who have been disrespected, beat on, cheated on, lied on. Miss Sheely is one of those ladies who went through all of that, including myself at a young age. Started at the age of 14. I thought I knew it all, had it all, and my mom and them didn't know much of nothing. So, the things that I went through, I'm glad I went through it because it made me the woman that I am today, but had a lot of ups and downs. Went through an abusive relationship. Uh, being beat on, being spit on. Yeah, no, right? <laughs> uh, but at that time, I felt like I'm in love. He loves me. And it don't get no better than this. So I had a child at the age of 17, dropped out of school in the ninth grade. But how many of y'all know, all of you guys in here have encouraged me because I'm back in school now. I'm finna get my diploma and it feels so doggone good because I want to take me some college classes. And now that I have a child who's eight years old, I see that what my mother was telling me was all the truth. But I dropped out of school in the ninth grade, moved out, began to touch things that I shouldn't have. I thank God I never touched a big, big, big drug. I'm gonna be honest with y'all today, okay? I'm, I'm not gonna beat around the bush. But I did begin to start drinking and then and, and, and trying to do things in clubhouse. I wasn't even old enough to be in the club. <laughs> but I went down this road of destruction. And I stopped believing in myself. I knew that I had a gift. I started singing when I was five years old. And I knew I had a gift. And, it touched people because people would let me know when you sing, it just moves me. It makes me feel some certain type of way. But being stuck in a small town by the name of High Point, North Carolina, I felt like I, hey, how y'all know, y'all, where y'all from? That's what's up, hey boo. <laughs> I felt like I ain't never gonna go nowhere. Ain't nobody ever gonna come and find me. I'm gonna be sitting right here. So I stopped believing in myself. Went down this road that wasn't quite the best for me. But like I said, I had a, a daughter, I had a girl, I had a child. And it's different when you have little girls because I have to be what I need to be so she can grow up and be the woman, you know what I mean? And what she sees from me is what she'll be. So that's when I turned, tried to turn things around. I started singing again, because I had stopped singing. I didn't pick up a microphone for a long time. But I began to sing again, went back to church. How many of y'all know I was raised up in the church house? Every day was church. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Some of y'all been through that too. 
But I thank God for the church. Because if it had not been for the church house, I probably wouldn't be right here today. The prayers of the righteous avail of much. And there were so many people who were praying for me. But I picked the microphone back up again and went to the idol. Got to the American Idol. I was the only one who didn't have a diploma. I was the only one who had a child. And I didn't quite speak the way they thought I should. <laughs> Country, that's what we call it. I never did a competition before. So I didn't know what to expect. And I didn't know how to put on a front. I just knew to be me. So when I got there, they gave me hell, y'all. Asked me, where's your diploma? I said, well, I don't have one. Oh, you don't have a diploma? And you have a child? And how old are you? And you want to be an idol? <laughs> of course not. Do you know who watches this show? They said, I suggest you not say anything about none of that. Don't tell the people you have a child. Don't speak about your diploma because you ain't going to get no votes. Man, I was tore up from that because that's my life. And I would be lying and hiding, you know, my child. And no, I couldn't do that. So I spoke about it. And I stood strong on it. I let the people know, no, I dropped, yep, I dropped out. I'm not saying it's right, but th this, is, this is what I did. And I was catching flack in the beginning from most of, I ain't trying to be funny, most of the white people. Say it again, girl. It's true. <laughs> they were saying bad things on the internet. Oh, man, she can't be an idol. Listen to how she speaks. Look at how she dresses. She don't have this. She don't have that. She, an idol is somebody who's perfect. Yeah, right. Nobody's perfect. That's why I came out with my book. Life is not a fairy tale. Because ain't nobody perfect but the man upstairs. We fall down, we get up. All, everything that you go through is for a reason. Those are your tests. They, they come to make you strong. You have to have a testimony. You can't go nowhere and talk to nobody if you ain't got a testimony. I couldn't be standing right here today talking to y'all if I didn't have a testimony to tell. So I, I went through those things for a reason. So... I said to myself, I want to see how I'm going to switch this thing up to let them know that I'm here for my gift. Regardless of what I've been through, I still have a gift. And there's a lot of people in this room today who have gifts. And you might have went through some things, and you might not do it how they say you should do it. But don't let nobody come in the way of your destiny. Because folk will try to do that, you know, with their mouths. Because you didn't do it quite how they feel you should do it. So I went and I chose the song Summertime. <laughs> song, y'all. Summertime. I'm song. I chose Summertime. Old song from the movie Porgy and Bess. I, it, it, way before my time. So the woman said, you sure you want to sing that? I said, yes, because the words in the song, I'm going to go out. I'm going to take my shoes off. Don't give me no bling bling. Don't give me a whole bunch of makeup. Just give me slim. I want to be simple because I want them to see me for who I am. I want them to understand that, yes, I've been through that, but I'm trying now. I'm moving forward. So after I did Summertime, I remember standing up, and everybody in the room was quiet. And I began to cry. And I looked, and I saw other people crying. And that's when you was crying too, boo. Give me five. You my girl. That's when people begin to stop trying to judge me and see that, man, but she is talented. She did they, that song right there. People would tell me, they would be honest with me too. They would walk up to me in the streets and say, I ain't gonna lie, I wouldn't vote for you at first. But after you did that song sometime, it was something about it that made me say, man, but she's got a talent out of this world. She's got an amazing gift. And that's when doors began to open for me. All my people always had my back. I knew this. Because you guys know that, yeah, we go through things. It, single parenting and young parent, that didn't start in my generation. That's been going on for years. 
You know, I know some mothers, older mothers in the church house that's been raising their kids, did it all by themselves. So it wasn't just me. They tried to just make me feel like I was the bad person. It was so many other young ladies who were single mothers that was watching the television that saw me doing it. So many other young ladies who had dropped out of school, who had been abused by boyfriends or fathers or whatever the situation may be that said, hey, she can be my idol because I've been through that. And the same thing happened to me. People made me feel like because I went through that, I couldn't go further or I couldn't reach my destiny and the dreams and the things that I wanted to do, I can no longer do anymore. So I'm here today to tell all of you women in the building that you can be whatever you want to be. It ain't going to be easy because nothing comes easy. It's always going to be a fight. Even when you got to study for those tests, I, don't, I ain't been through that, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to come back and tell y'all. <laughs> but even when you have to study for the test and still go out and live your lives, and some of you might be mothers or some of you might be taking care of your families and just whatever, trying to work jobs, that stuff is hard. But nothing comes easy. And it means more when you fight for it. I tell people I won't let nothing now separate me from the love of God and from what I worked my butt off for. I worked hard for this. And I won't let nothing, I, I, I have to sometimes check myself. Cause sometimes we get a little wild and can be stupid and lose it all. But I worked hard for this. So to every lady in the building, whatever it is that you wanna do, it don't even have to be one thing. Like I said, I'm, I sing, but I'm doing some acting. I never thought I would be acting, y'all. I ain't never seen a Broadway show a day in my life. I never seen a show and they invited me. They asked me. They saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. And I did it and I did well at it. Got some good reviews. People coming to see the show, they, 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 they enjoy it. So I don't only sing, I wanna do everything. I might even wanna put out a clothing line. All right, <laughs> I got to do it. But I don't want anything, I don't want anyone to tell me because of what I've been through or because of this or because of that, you can't do it. That's a lie. That's not so. And all you ladies in here, I wish that you could come see the color purple. Where the woman with the tickets? How do you get the tickets? You just pass them out to... Okay, you got winners and stuff like that. Okay, cool. I want every lady in the building, if you can get to the color purple, to come see it, because it's such an encouraging message with this lady, Seely, who had a child at the age of 14, two kids from her father. You laughing, girl, but it is hard up there on the stage. I live her life when I do that show. I step into her shoes, and it's hard but she's beat on, spit on, lied on, the whole town looks over her. In the end, she has this song called, I'm Here. <laughs> you my girl, I'm here. And she talks about, after all that stuff that I've been through, it's just the little things now, still here, still breathing, I still got the activity of my limbs. They said I wouldn't make it, but I'm here today. It's all right. It's all right. I tell people, they ask me, do, you, do, do your feelings get hurt when people talk about you? I tell them, I'm an open book. They've been talking about me. <laughs> They've been saying stuff. But I'm happy with the woman that I've become today. I'm happy with that. So I don't listen to the negativity. I got a lot of older ladies who keep me in check. And I keep people with me who let me know when I'm wrong and when I'm right. Not no yes men. People who tell me, okay, boo, come down. Where did you just go? <laughs> Get up off that high horse. But I like, I like it when I can be Tasia. I can come in here and kick my shoes off, grab the mic, walk the aisles, hug, talk. Because I'm only human just like y'all. And the same way I'm right here today, you could be right here too, baby. Whatever it is you want to do. What are you going to school for? Nurse, okay.
do it. Don't let nobody come in between that. Nobody. You keep prayer in your life. And keep a good man in your life, doggone it. Whew. I ain't even gonna, I ain't even gonna get on that. <laughs> oh no. She just said, get on it. But keep a good man in your life, somebody who believes in you, who adores you, who believes in, you know, whatever you want to do. Say, baby, I got you. That's what you want to do. I got you. You tired? Come let me rub your feet for your test tomorrow. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Keep a good man in your life. But live life to the best. Live life to the best, y'all. There was a young lady here I heard that not too long ago, she got murdered. Am I right or am I wrong? Am I right? Yes. That's tough. Y'all pray for her and her family. But y'all watch y'all back too. You got to always watch your back. And never take life for granted. Never take life for granted. Because somebody didn't wake up this morning. Somebody our age is in the hospital can't do for themselves. So you're blessed. Everybody, you're blessed. And you have tough days. I tell people even now that I'm blessed, I still get up in the mornings and I cry, good God of mine. Because I take care of my whole family and I'm not but 25 years old. I got my whole family, everybody, in one home. And that can be hard sometimes. I'm traveling every day. I'm out here amongst all these different people. I'm not with my daughter every day. That gets hard. Still, she's in school, so she, and how y'all, like, she's going through some of the things that I went through in school, and it breaks my heart. But because I know I went through that, I got her back 100. I pay for the best tutors. <laughs> You know what I mean? I go home and I try my best to do things with her. We read every night. And she'll tell me, Mommy, I want to read good. And I tell her, you can do that, baby. I always tell, and I go to young, I go to, to elementary schools and middle schools and talk to young people and tell them that everybody learns different. You got 20 kids in one class. Somebody might catch on quicker than, than the other student. But do you know it's so embarrassing for you to raise up your hand sometimes and be like, um, I need you to come back here and uh, do this one-on-one -on -one with me for a good 15 minutes. Can you do that? It's embarrassing to kids. I know that's what I went through. So when I go into classrooms, I tell them, hey, all y'all smart. Y'all just learn different. We ain't all the same. We all got different personalities born on different days. We different. But once you realize and come, become comfortable with yourself and know that you are who you say you are, regardless of what folk beside you might say, yes, I'm going to raise my hand because I didn't get it. You hush, and I need to teach you to come back here. <laughs> Got to be honest with yourself. Don't, you can't live a life. Life is not a fairy tale, and nobody's perfect. So live your life, young ladies. Keep praying your life. Keep a good man. And don't let nobody come in the way of your destiny. That's my biggest thing. Nobody. If it's what you want, you do it. You know your mama always going to have you back. Mama's is always there for you. But friends, they come and they go. People, I've had a lot of people come in my life and go. The, the same folks said they had my back and they loved me, dissed me. People tried to come after my house, my home that I work hard for. The same people that said, I got your back, I love you, you're so talented. Ooh, girl. They tried, to, they tried to destroy me. But even then, I didn't give up. I kept my head up. I didn't run and hide. Because I ain't going to let nobody, and I mean that, come in the way of my destiny. I will live my life like Rihanna and T.I. say. Hey. <laughs> Every time this song come on, honey, I'll be the man. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm going to do it. I've been through too much folks said and did. And guess what? Them same folk that said and did, they're not here today. 
They're not in my life today. So don't let nobody come in the way of your destiny. You hear what I say? Watch your back. Don't take life for granted. Every day when you get up in the morning, thank God that you live to see another day. Grace and mercy has brought all of us thus far. All of us in this room. We have a lot to be thankful for. So every day when you wake up, go after it. Give 150. Study for that test. You know what I mean? Some of y'all, I'm going to give y'all my number because I need y'all to call me because I'm trying to get my diploma. And I told my teacher I did not know it was going to be this hard. I've been out of school for a while. But I ain't going to let that stop me. And I'm, I got VH1 cameras following me. They, I want people to see it. I want young people to see it. To see that I'm not ashamed. Nope, I do not remember that. <laughs> I don't remember that. But I'm going to learn it. And I'm going to study. I, got, I get homework. That is so cute to me. <laughs> She said, you got homework tonight. I said, me? I got, I got a show tonight. So I don't care. You got homework. And my daughter gets to see it. When I see my daughter, she starts smiling. When I say, I got homework. You got your homework. We're going to do this together. I said, mommy, you got homework? I said, yeah. I got homework. I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of myself. Yeah, I waited a little late to get it. But I'm getting it. And all you ladies in here. Everybody in here, y'all encourage me. I know that my music and some of the things that I do encourage you guys, but you encourage me because I'm...